So the final level uh, of complexity in protein structure is going to be quaternary structure. So quaternary structure can only occur when there's more than one polypeptide, right? So more than one polypeptide, okay? So for instance, uh, if we have two polypeptides that have the exact same amino acid sequence, right? And so form a tertiary structure, we'll just call this, all right? You can have a second polypeptide with the exact same amino acid sequence, but, right, and has the same tertiary structure. And if they interact with each other and, form, and are required to form one protein, all right, uh, the general name for this is an oligomer, okay? So, and the oligomeric state of this is going to be called a homodimer, okay? Where the homo is because they're the same. All right, they're the exact same uh, polypeptide sequence. Dimer is because there's two of them. All right. So in this structure here of hemoglobin, so we'll talk more about hemoglobin later, but in this structure of hemoglobin, there are alpha and beta subunits. So alpha are going to have uh, almost identical uh, uh, amino acid sequence, while the beta, sequence, uh, beta are uh, different in amino acid sequence. So that's called, so for hemoglobin, we call that an alpha 2, beta 2, right? And then that's a heterotetramer because not all of the polypeptide sequences are identical. And there are four subunits. Okay, so each of these, each of these polypeptide chains, we call a subunit. So here's, for instance, in our previous example, here's one subunit, one subunit number two. Okay, and so that allows us. That is the. Uh, so polypeptides can then interact with each other to form the entire protein. And so sometimes this quaternary structure is really important uh, for the function of the protein. In fact, can define, uh, as we'll see when we talk about myoglobin and hemoglobin, can be the major difference in the function between those two proteins. Right? So we can see this, for instance, on an STS page. So here's a... Um, Here's a protein uh, which is involved in the immune system. So this is called immunoglobulin. So uh, this is an antibody, all right? And so there are four subunits in immunoglobulin, okay? So there's one here. There's a longer strand here. So these are all different polypeptide chains, okay? So we've got four. All right, so two of the two of the uh, the shorter the two shorter subunits, okay, are identical, or have uh, the same uh, amino acid sequence, and the two longer have the same amino acid sequence. So just like hemoglobin, well, we can refer to this as a alpha two beta two heterotetramer. Okay, if we denature this. All right, what we can do, so remember in an SDS page gel, this is a largely a denaturing technique. So we can unfold this protein, all right, and we can also add uh, a disulfide reductant, okay, to break disulfide bonds that are present that link together the, uh, the small chain and the large chain of the aminoglobulin, all right. So if we don't add, uh, for instance, if we don't add a denature, or if we don't add a, a disulfide reductant, uh, what we see is that we get in the STS page the molecular weight is consistent with the full length of the protein. That's because the small chain and the large chains can't uh, covalently disconnect from each other. Oh, I also meant disulfide here. There we go. So that links the two large chains. All right. So none of the peptides can 
can uh, separate from each other. So they all stay together and they have a large molecular weight about 200, uh, above 200 uh, kilodaltons, okay? But if we add uh, the reductant such as um, beta mercaptoethanol ethanol or uh, TCEP or DTT, then these can separate. The disulfide bonds uh, can be broken, so break that covalent linkage, and then these subunits can uh, go away from each other. All right, and then in this lane, in the lane on the far right hand side, you see the large chain subunit and the small chain subunits, and they're able to be differentiable uh, on an STS page gel.